how to match a 3D object to its background image in Adobe Dimension. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. And in today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about how do you take a, a 3D object and add it into a scene or match your object to the image in the background. So let me start off. I'm going to do a um, food pouch. And here's the design that I did in Illustrator. Um, so we're going to be taking this graphic right here and applying it to a 3D object in Adobe Dimension and then messing with the background image and the object to get it to look like it belongs in that image. So first thing I want to do is go up here to my food pouch, which is right here. This is just a standard um, 3D object that comes in uh, dimension. And then I'm just going to rotate to the front so I can look straight at it. I'm just right clicking on the mouse to do that. Okay, so now that I'm looking straight at the pouch, I'm going to come over here to matte material. I just want to drag that over and give it a nice matte finish. The roughness is at 100. Base color is probably fine. It's going to be white, but uh, if you make this 100% white up here, it's going to look a little washed out uh, once we add lighting and everything. The next thing I want to do is click on place graphic on model, and I'm going to go to where I saved my stuff. I saved a couple of PNGs earlier from the file that I was uh, showing you. So here's one that's a silver metallic top and bottom section. And here's this, the uh, other graphics on it that I don't want to have a metallic sheen to. So let's just add the silver stuff first. Get it on there. And then I just want to make sure that this goes all the way to the edge. Let's just scoot it up a little bit, maybe about there. And then spread it out this way. All right, I think that's covering both edges. I want to bump the metallic up on that. And roughness, I also want to be really low. So that's going to look really cool. Uh, next thing I want to do is come over here and add another. And add this more colorful looking image. And just do the same thing, kind of stretch it out. This time I'm holding shift to keep everything proportionate. And I'll probably stretch it out just a little bit because this is a little bit bigger. Something like that. Looks pretty good. Okay, and then I'm going to check. I want roughness to be really low. I don't want any metallic on this. But I do want it to be nice and shiny. And that should be just fine, just like that. So the next thing we want to do is um, you can use one of these... Um, preloaded uh, images like this table. And if you do that, just come click over here and click match image. Um, it will give you, you know, use the image aspect ratio. Multiple lights usually is better unless it's an outdoor thing. Um, and then match camera perspective and then click OK. And you'll see that it snaps your object directly into the scene and then adds lights accordingly. And usually it's it's okay. It just depends on the quality of your image. But now, of course, I can rotate this around. I can increase the scale of it. I can, uh, let's see, let's do scale. Let's just bump it up a little bit like this, bring it over here. And then that gives you some room for some text over here if you wanted to. And we could render this out and it would look really cool. But uh, let's just do a couple others so you can see. If I import <clears throat> images background, and I click on something that, um, let's see if I can find one that I used. Um, beach with fronds. Let's do that one. Okay, so this is a little bit different Im image. It's a little bit different plane that we're working with. Um, and the lighting is a little different. So let's just click here on the background image and then click match image. And you're going to get all the same stuff. This one automatically p picked outdoor sun which is what you would want for an image like this. Uh, so all those settings are good. I'm going to hit OK and watch as it shifts and then adds a little bit of sun. <clears throat> now, what I find, though, is when I'm doing this, I'll just want to do a few variations on uh, on the lighting. So let me just kind of get the angle where I like it. That's probably good. I might come over here to sun 
and mess with the intensity a little bit. It, it looks like a very bright day. It looks like it's actually not that cloudy. Um, so I'm going to drop the clouds down a little bit, even though there's a lot of clouds in the picture. Where this person would be standing looks like it's pretty sunny. Also, I think the height of the sun might be just a little bit higher, you know, maybe somewhere in here. And then you can also mess with the rotation, but I think the rotation's about right. We'll just go go with what it kind of intended there and play that out. I think that looks just fine. The only thing I might do is come in here to my food pouch again, change this matte color to just a little bit lighter. I think it's a little bit gray looking. I think that'll look better and look more like it's white. And I'm going to go ahead and render this one out um, so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, pouch on beach. And then usually you want to do a PSD. So that's going to give you the most options later if you want to take it into Photoshop and do any like image touch up or highlights or, uh, you know, color grading, things like that. So I will see you guys when this is done rendering. And that is the finished product, as you can see. It turns out really cool. And then this is a Photoshop file that you can bring into Photoshop and touch up as needed. So let me show you another example. Um, I'm gonna go to File, Import, Images, Background, and let's see, where did I go with that one? Nice kitchen, maybe it was this one. Let me see here. Might be this one. Yeah, this one. So this is a cool looking image. You got an obvious plane right here, but uh, watch what happens when I click match image. Oh, it doesn't even give me this option. So if I hit OK, it kind of matches some of the lighting, sort of, but it doesn't match the plane at all. So this this button over here really only works with images where the plane is kind of looking right at you about like this somewhere. You can't have something that's you know, way skewed like this. But cool thing is you can just right click and uh, and get it to work the way you need it to. So let's try to lay this out as best we can. Um, I think if you just kind of go with something like about like that, you're probably good. And I'm going to increase the size of this thing. So as you can see, the shadows are over here on this side of all the objects that are in the image. But they aren't that way on our object. So what we want to do is come over to these two directional lights and rotate those around so that they're roughly in the same spot. Let's just see, do, 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 do. maybe about here. And the height of this one's probably a little too much. Uh, let's I just make it a little higher is what I should say. Like the, the length of the shadow is a bit much. So something like this and then maybe Ah, that's probably fine. Somewhere in there is probably okay. Um, intensity, I don't know if it needs to be higher or lower. Just kind of mess around with it a little bit and see. Eh. Maybe play with the environmental light. Might lighten it up just a little bit if we do a little more intensity. Rotation's not really going to make a whole lot of difference. But I think something like that will be fine. But just I'm just showing you how to do this if the image itself um, can't be matched automatically um, and you got to do it by hand. You just right click and then turn that the camera angle until you get something that, that looks right. Now this is probably not even perfect. As you can see, there's a little more distance here than there is here. I could probably tweak with it a little bit more to get it just right, but I think for the purposes of this tutorial, that's fine. And one thing to note is once you get this plane where you need it, then you can just click and drag the object all along that plane and find a spot if you don't rotate it um, where you can have it set and I, I think in this picture you know about here would be where you'd want it so let's render that one out as well and just see um, what that looks like so hey guys that's the finished product as you can see it added in some cool shadows on the objects that would fall in line with where the shadow from this object is which I think is really cool makes it look like it belongs in the scene a little bit more and that is the tutorial. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments section down below. Smash the like button and hit subscribe. Check out this playlist over here and I will see you guys in the next video.